Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to look at our five recommended workflows for repurposing content in Kamua. But before we start, let me just explain how this works. Each workflow is in five steps, four of which are the same every time, and we'll be swapping out one of those steps for each of the different workflows I'll be showing you. So the five step workflow goes like this. First, you have your pre-trimmed decision. Then you have check your shot list. Then you have edit and tweak. Now this is the step that we'll be swapping out each time. Then you have a captions decision. And then lastly, number five, we have final render. So let's quickly break down what those steps mean. So the pre-trimmed decision. When you add videos to Kamua, you need to decide whether you want to pre-trim the video. You can do this by clicking the pre-trim scissor icon next to your content as you're adding it. And it allows you to select the part of the video that you want Kamua to process. This will work with any video, but it's especially effective for those longer source videos that are say 15, 20, 30 minutes or more. Now just bear in mind that the whole video still has to be uploaded or linked in Kamua, but it will save you a lot of time because Kamua will only process the section that you have pre-trimmed instead of the entire video. And if you're uploading a long video, you may want to download our free tool TinyVid, which will allow you to trim the video and also decrease its file size before you upload it to Kamua, which will save you a lot of time on the upload. So the next step is check the shot list. When you add a video to Kamua, AutoCut will do its thing and break up the video into all of its component shots. At this point, you'll just want to glance over the shot list to make sure all the cuts are correct because depending on the certain factors like speed of movement or general brightness of the video, AutoCut may be a little too aggressive and put too many cuts in, in which case you want to merge those shots. Or you might find that it hasn't been aggressive enough, so you want to split some shots where it's needed. And the next step is edit and tweak. So this is the main step where you'll do most of the work. So for each of the different workflows, we'll be swapping out this step as like I said, all the other steps are the same. So moving on to the next step, which is the captions decision. At this point, you'll probably already know if you want captions on your video or not. So I guess this is more of an optional step rather than a solid decision-making process. But this step is here because we always recommend captions to be the final thing you do with your video. Mainly because while you're editing, you don't want to waste time adding and amending captions that you might not even keep in the final edit. So it's always best to do that last. And then we have the final render. So once you've finished editing your video, you'll need to render it. We always recommend doing a draft render first because that won't count towards your monthly quota of outputs. You can then watch the video with a watermark on it. And if it still needs work, you can go back and edit it some more. But if it's good to go, you can click the remove watermark button and download it. If you're doing a multi-render for several outputs at once, you can also select render with watermark, so none of the outputs will count towards your quota either, until you hit that remove watermark button. Okay, so that's the main workflow. Let's now take a look at step three, edit and tweak. So the different editing methods are AI Builder, Crop Wizard, Single Shot Videos, Auto Crop First, and auto crop as you go. Firstly, the AI Builder is only available under a premium subscription to Kamua and isn't available on the free account. But it's a great little tool for creating automatic edits. You can find it under the wizard button on the left and you'll be presented with several options. And basically what this does is it creates automatic edits based on the parameters you choose. And you can output up to 10 videos at a time. So you can use this to output 10 variations of a video. Then you can choose the best ones to either use them as they are or take back into the studio to tweak them to perfection. You may even want to use this feature for some inspiration on how to edit your main video as it might give you a perspective that you hadn't even thought of that works quite well. Next, we have the crop wizard, which surprise, surprise, can also be found under the wizard button on the left. This tool is for those times when you have a complete video and all you want to do is change its aspect ratio. For instance, maybe you need to convert an entire landscape video to square or portrait. All you have to do is select the aspect ratios you want, toggle auto crop on or off, and if you want to, remove black bars if the video has them. 
And like the AI Builder, it can output 10 videos at a time, but just be aware that if you have more than one video in your project, it will attempt to process each aspect ratio on each video. So be sure to keep the total outputs under 10, or you will get an error message. And from the outputs page, you can check how the auto crop performed, and if you need to, just hit the edit button on an output to go back in and tweak it. And the third workflow is for single shot videos. Now there are different types of single shot videos. Some are cinematic and purposely recorded in a single shot and some are made to look like they were recorded in a single shot. Other examples might be where you have someone talking to the camera, maybe in a live stream or maybe in a split screen like the gallery view in Zoom calls. When editing videos like this, you might look at the shot list and think, where are all the shots? But that's because the whole thing is just one shot, so autocrop has worked as it should. So here, you add the shot to the timeline. If there's movement in the shot, sure, toggle autocrop on to follow the action, and you can tweak it here and there with keyframes if needed. If there's not much movement, you can simply do a manual crop and leave the frame in that position. If the video is some kind of split screen or gallery view though, and you're cropping the video, you can have it cut to whoever's talking. And to do that, just put the frame on the person you want, maybe add a little zoom if needed, play the video, then when someone else starts talking, pause it, then split the clip, then move the frame to the other person, and just rinse and repeat, do that for the entire thing. Now, the last two workflows will probably be the most commonly used, as these can work on a whole range of videos, and we'll start with auto crop first. So what is auto crop? It's a feature in Kamua that uses artificial intelligence to select and track the main subject of your video to keep them in frame. And it's particularly useful when converting a landscape video to portrait, or maybe, for instance, YouTube video to TikTok. And the idea with the auto crop first workflow is that once you've added all your shots you want to the timeline and done all your editing and all your trimming and all bits like that, you use the project settings on the left to auto crop the entire timeline. Then you can go back in and tweak it with custom track or keyframes if needed. This workflow will work best with content that has a lot of movement in it and has an easily definable subject, like one person or object moving around in the frame. So you can be confident that auto crop will select exactly the same thing that you want it to. And then finally, we have auto crop as you go. And this is the best workflow to use if your shots have less movement or if your video has a harder to define subject. For example, if there's a lot happening in the frame in most of the shots, or it has multiple subjects, or even if the subject is too wide for the frame, like a car for instance. So it's more of a subjective decision on what part of the frame you want to crop. So the basic idea here is that once you've added the shots to your timeline, Instead of auto cropping everything at once, you go through the clips one by one using manual crop for most of them, because that's all that's needed. And you're adding in auto crop only to the ones that need it, which you can do from the clip crop settings on the right. The main reason to use this workflow is there's no point in waiting for auto crop to process every single clip at once when most of them only need a static crop anyway. And even though auto crop can detect static subjects, if the main subject of the video is hard to define for us humans, it'll be even harder for auto crop's AI to define. So you may as well just select it yourself right off the bat. Okay, so to summarize, each workflow is in five steps, which go like this. Step one, decide whether to pre-trim the video. Step two, check your shot list and split or merge any that need it. Step three, Edit and tweak, which is the step that changes with each workflow and consists of the AI builder, the crop wizard, single shot videos, auto crop first and auto crop as you go. And then we have step four, which is deciding on whether or not to add captions. And then step five, which is the final render. So there you go, guys. Those are our five recommended workflows to use in Kamua. So just make sure you're using the right one for your project's needs. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, be sure to give us a like and a subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.